Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Super Micro CSC815 chassis and specifically the motherboards that go inside the X10DRH-C-CT and CLN4. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Super Micro X10 DRH family of motherboards. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful in today's video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, this is an extended ATX motherboard. Uh, that's one of the things that's always been really nice about Super Micro is you can take this um, and put it in, you know, whether it's the, um, the 815 chassis or a number of different other chassis, uh, you can take this and swap it around. And, and also with A15 chassis, you can put in different motherboards as well. So that, you know that's one of the nice things about Super Micro is it's just super compatible, and you can pretty much just swap things around and uh, make it work, which is pretty cool. So uh, there are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600v3 or v4 series processors. Uh, I personally recommend, uh, and it depends on the application that you're using it for. But if you're using like a low-end system, then I would go with the uh, E5 26. Uh, 20 v3 uh, it's really a, a, a cheap processor that you get two of them for you know uh, you know inexpensive price um, or if you're going for a high-end application personally I'm a, a big fan of the e5 2680 v4 um, you can go even higher of course like the 2690 v4 but um, the, the 2680 v4 is just a really good price point uh, for what you're getting as far as you know bang per buck um, so that's one of the uh, procs that I personally recommend so just again it depends on the application that you're going to be using it for uh, as far as RAM is concerned uh, it's a DDR4 machine uh, there are 16 dim slots inside uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use you can use 2133 uh, 2400 or 2666 I will note though if you're using 2666 it's going to clock back down to 2400 so just know that going into it it's one of those things that I just tell people in advance because hey you might have some 26 laying around or some 2666 laying around and just throw them in and it doesn't cost you anything and that's great uh, but if you're buying right now and you have to choose you know which one do you want I'll tell you to get the 2400 speed because it's going to be cheaper for you uh, so no point in spending the extra money okay uh, as far as the different sizes you could go as low as a 4 gig 8 gig 16 gig 32 gig 64 gig or believe it or not all the way up to 128 gigabytes which is pretty awesome uh, but you can only do that with one type of RAM and let's get into the different types you have uh, ECC registered also known as RDIM or you have load reduced known as LRDIM uh, with ECC registered you can get a max of one terabyte using 1664 gigs at 2400 megahertz with load reduce, however, you can use that 64 gig that we were just talking about, which means you can get two terabytes using 1664 gigs again at 2400 megahertz. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the RAM and the CPUs inside, let's go ahead and bust this thing open. I want to show you about the uh, the different channels and how you would actually install them, uh, especially if you're not maxing it out. It's it's key to know uh, how to actually utilize the channels to max maximize your performance. But before we get inside, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear because you never want to be inside without some sort of protection. So I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. First things first, like pretty much uh, any other Super Micro machine, you're going to push these two buttons down right here. You're going to pull back, and you're going to see this pop open. Lift the top up, and voila, you are in. Pretty simple, right? Okay, um, <clears throat> you'll notice a couple different things here. We didn't really go over too much of the, uh, the storage for this chassis, but uh, this specific one is a... Um, Four bay large form factor. Uh, you can see the back plane right here. You know your fans. Uh, you have a, a cabled in power supply over here, um, and then you have your two heat sinks and all your uh, your dim slots. Okay, so uh, that's what we're here to go over. So uh, to get to them to access them, you're gonna have to uh, remove the air baffle, which is very simple. You're just gonna lift this straight up and put it to the side. So uh, as we discussed, there's two CPUs. This is CPU one and this is CPU two. CPU one controls the eight DIMM slots right here. CPU two controls the eight DIMM slots right here. Uh, this is important for a number of reasons. Let's just say you were actually only running this with one CPU. You cannot install any memory over here. You would only install the memory in the eight DIMM slots up here. Okay. And let's just say um, you are, and most people are running this with two CPUs, um, and that's what we'd recommend as well. So let's say you're running this with two CPUs and you didn't want to max it out and um, you didn't want to put in 16 DIMMs, you wanted to put in 8 DIMMs. Well, this is important to note, um, how would you actually configure it? Because you don't want to just install in the first 8 DIMMs over here because you're getting nothing out of the memory channels over here. So you want to maximize your performance and you want to install them at the beginning of each memory channel. So you ask, what's the beginning of each memory channel? And that's a great question. So um, we'll, we'll go over this in detail. So we said, uh, 
uh, CPU one, eight DIMM slots. Within that, there are four memory channels, and each memory channel has two DIMMs per channel. And you can tell that by the color coding, which is very nice. So the blue is the start of the channel. So this right here, this one I just opened the tabs on, on the first blue slot, is A1. If you come over here to this next blue slot, wait for it, B1. You're noticing a trend, right? Come over here to this next blue so slot, and you have C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, H1. Okay, so really simple. Uh, it's also labeled right here on the motherboard. It might be hard to see on the uh, camera itself, but um, if you're you know at home and you're wanting to know, hey, how do I do it? Uh, it's actually it'll show it right here, which makes it very helpful. So uh, as you imagine, if this is A1, then this is A2. Uh, this is B2. This is C2. Uh, this is D2. So on and so forth. Okay. Um, so uh, again, why do we, why do we actually put the DIMMs in the first uh, uh, slot of the channel and skip the second slot? Um, this is only, of course, if you're uh, uh, not maxing it out. Um, and the reason why is just again maximizing performance. I mean, think about it logically. If you have uh, you know the four memory channels up here just completely maxed out with eight DIMMs and just you know running as hard as they can go, but the the four memory channels here doing nothing, well then you're getting actually nothing out of these. You want to just a nice even distribution across all your loads to make sure that you're maximizing your performance. It's uh, it's really simple overall, but it's one thing that I stress because uh, I I have seen this uh, issue from a number of different people uh, who will um, you know wonder why they're not getting as good of a boost of performance and it's uh, simply just maximizing your channels. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. Um, and do a, uh, show you guys a few tips that I always like to point out. Now we're actually loading these with uh, 32 gig, uh, 2400 megahertz modules here. Um, and before we uh, get started, I always like to point out two things. One, um, on the module itself, uh, there is a notch known as a key. This key is very important because the key is not perfectly in the center, which means when you go to install it, you have to make sure the module is facing the correct way, uh, and you have to line it up properly. If you don't, you could potentially damage the module, or even worse, you could damage the DIMM slot, which means you might have to replace the motherboard, which honestly is a pain in the butt have to take them in and out, reinstall all the connectors, make everything proper. It's uh, it's not an issue that you want to run into, so simply just make sure you line it up properly. So I always point that out as number one, and number two, I always like to open all my tabs up first. It just makes everything so much easier, so that when I'm going to actually install memory, I don't have one of these tabs kind of fighting me a little bit or preventing the edge of the module from getting in. So I personally like to just go pop open all the tabs, nice and simple. Uh, just a couple easy uh, tips that I recommend uh, just to make your life easier because why make it harder, right? Okay, so now we're going to put this in. I've lined it up properly. I can see the key is perfect with the notch that's uh, sticking up from the, the dim uh, socket itself. And now that it's in, um, I want to point out another uh, common issue that we see quite often is, uh, you know, I'm not holding the module. The module is physically in there. However, it is not fully seated. Um, you need to hear these two clicks right here. So listen to this tab pop in. One, two. And you can even see how these uh, tabs are sticking out further than the tab here because uh, these tabs are open and this tab is not. Um, it's, a, it's a simple issue, but it's a common issue where someone thinks that they um, that they have a failed module, the module is not registering, uh, might even throw the whole channel off, and then you have two that aren't registering, and it is simply just uh, the module's not uh, properly seated, it's not properly in the socket. So uh, we always tell people to just rotate their modules around, uh, and the main reason we ask people to do that is because generally the one that you're not seeing that isn't properly seated, you end up moving it to a different socket or a different slot, and uh, you end up putting it in properly, and all of a sudden, hey, everything's working great, and it's just a, a very common error. And I always tell people, I don't care if you've been doing this, you know, 20 years, or this was your first uh, day in the data center. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very easy <laughs> easy mistake to make. Um, I've done it on video and recorded it, so you got to love that, right? Uh, so, it, like I said, it's an easy thing to do, uh, and it's one thing I always just say to to double check and to be safe on. And at the very end, I always like to check these tabs right here and make sure that they're fully in. Um, and that's one way that you can just do uh, a discount and double check at the end and uh, make sure everything is uh, is good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filling these up and hit the fast forward right now. So while it's just that easy, uh, one thing I will note uh, when you are, um, uh, are switching from each side, you do have to 
uh, rotate it as far as the way you're aligning the key for the module. Uh, same down here, it's facing different directions. So I just want to point that out because uh, it's easy to get in a groove and you're popping them in and then all of a sudden you're shoving it in the wrong way. And that's the, the common mistake that we see. So, all right, we're going to put the air baffle back on. You see these three ridges, you're just going to line them up with the fans here which means this little plastic piece goes in between the two modules over here, but it pops in nice and easy. Put the top back on and hey, call it a day. So we just added in 1632 gigs, uh, which is um, uh, 512 gigabytes. It's gonna be a pretty awesome increase in performance overall for this machine. Um, and you know, it was, you could see it was really simple overall. It didn't take uh, very long at all, take you a couple of minutes to do. Uh, it's one of those things that I always recommend that, hey, if you're looking to you know, extend the life of your server, you're looking to um, uh, at, you know, make a Band-Aid so that it'll you know, work for several more years before you have to upgrade and you know, get an X11 or X12 or something like this, um, you know, I always tell people, upgrade your RAM. That's the way to go. Uh, that is the, the easiest way to get a boost in performance and a, the least expensive way to get a boost in performance, in my opinion. So uh, that being said, if you're looking for any upgrades uh, for your X10s or any other Super Micro motherboard for that matter, uh, do us a favor and please reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love to quote you. We have a ton of different uh, variety of RAM in stock of all different sizes and speeds. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor. Click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great day.